the review over momentum. So the first problem says that you have a braking force applied to a 300 kilogram motorcycle to reduce its speed from 20 to 16 meters per second in 10 seconds. Find the change that has taken place in the momentum of the motorcycle and the force of the brakes. So we know from the start that this is an impulse because it mentions a force. Anytime you have a force mentioned, it's an impulse. And for the first one, it's asking us to find the change taken in momentum. So for part A, you're going to use the change in momentum equals m vf minus vi. Uh, and the mass of it is 300. And then we have an initial speed of 20 and a final of 16. It's going to look like that. And that will give us negative 1,200. And the unit would be kilograms times meters per second. So then for part B, uh, it's asking us to find the force applied. So we're going to use the impulse formula. Force times time equals the change in momentum. And here, uh, we're going to plug in that negative uh, 1,200 that we got for the change in momentum. So the force times time, uh, the time is, sorry, 10 seconds. And negative 1,200 is our change in momentum. So the force should end up being 120 newtons. Next up, a shell having a mass of 25 kilograms is fired eastward from a cannon with a velocity of 500 meters per second. If the mass of the cannon is 1,000 kilograms, what is the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the recoil? So here, what you're going to do, this is an explosion. So we're going to draw a picture. So we're going to have an explosion. So we've got the cannon and the shell. And then after the explosion, we've got the cannon recoiling and the shell going forward. Okay, so we know beforehand that the cannon and the shell both have a mass and that mass is 500 for the cannon and 25 for the shell. And so we know afterwards that this is 500 and this is 25 because they're separated. Um, and then uh, also we know that before the velocity is 0 meters per second and then after we are looking for the recoil velocity on the cannon and we know that the shell is going 500 meters per second. So we're going to use our explosion formula, m1 plus m2 v equals uh, m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now you should notice since this is zero and it's going to go in for the velocity, this whole term is zero. So we get zero equals 500 v plus 25 times 500. Okay. Um, I apologize, I messed up here. The mass of the cannon is not 500, it is 1,000. There we go. So the cannon's mass is 1,000. Alright, so now you're going to subtract over the 25 times 500, which is negative 12,500 equals 1,000 newtons. Divide by 1,000 and you get negative 12.5 meters per second which means that the cannon is going backwards away from the shell at 12.5 meters per second. Number three, when Reggie stepped up to the plate and hit, number three, uh, when Reggie stepped up to the plate and hit a .15 kilogram fastball traveling 36 meters per second, the impact caused the ball to leave his bat with a velocity of 45 meters per second in the opposite direction. If the ball's impact lasted for .002 seconds, what force did Reggie exert on the ball? So we know it's an impulse problem because we've got a force that we're looking for. And we also have a time involved. But we know that the ball is coming in at 36 meters per second and leaving at 45 meters per second. Since these two are going opposite directions, I need to make one of them negative. So I'm going to go ahead and make the 45 negative. So now we go to the formula. Force times time equals change in momentum. And we know that the change in momentum is the mass of the object times the final minus the initial velocity. So we're going to go ahead and plug in everything. Force times 0 0.002 equals the mass of the ball, 0.15, times negative uh, 45 minus 36. And so uh, if you do that, you get negative 12.5 
equals force times 0 0.002 and then we're going to divide by 0 0.002 and we're going to get six in in my case I got negative 60 uh, or sorry negative 6075 if you had made the 36 negative instead you would have gotten positive 6075 and there's nothing wrong with that it just means that uh, you know we just assign left as negative so that's the reason the force is negative it's because it's going to the left okay number four um, John is on frictionless roller skates he is at rest when he catches a two kilogram ball so what that means is that the ball has to be coming towards John and then John here is going to catch the ball after the collision so before the collision John and the ball are separate after John is now with the ball so uh, we know this is inelastic because they catch right he catches it so they had to be separate before we also know that the ball has a mass of two kilograms and an unknown velocity beforehand and John has a mass of 70 kilograms and a velocity of zero beforehand because he is standing still afterwards we know they have a combined mass of 72 I'm just adding the two numbers together 70 and 2 and they have a velocity of 4 meters per second okay so now we're looking for the initial speed of the ball so we're going to use our uh, inelastic formula m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals m1 plus m2 v all right so we end up getting here 72 times 4 70 times 0 and 2v and 2v ends up equaling uh, 288 and so the velocity of the ball initially is 144 meters per second all right uh, number five number five says if you are traveling in your car at 25 meters per second and you apply a stopping force of 3,500 newtons, how long will it take you to come to a complete stop if your car has a mass of 800 kilograms? So what we're going to do first is we are going to figure out what this is. I see that there is a force involved, so I know this is probably an impulse. Okay, so now I'm going to try to plug, plug it in so that I can find the uh, time it takes to hit. So force times time equals the change in momentum. Remember that the change in momentum is equal to mass times final minus the initial velocity. So now we're going to plug in everything. 3,500 times T is equal to 1,800 times 0 minus 25. And we got to make this negative. The force has to be negative because it's going because uh, it's slowing the object down. And in the end, we end up with T is equal to 1,800 times negative 25 divided by negative 3500 solving for t and that gives us t is equal to 12.86 seconds number six two friends are two friends are ice skating in their excitement they have a collision Mary who has a mass of 50 kilograms and an initial speed of three meters per second to the right and a final speed of two meters per second in the same direction Allison has a mass of 45 kilograms and a final speed of 4 meters per second to the right. What is Allison's initial speed and direction? Now since the two girls have two different final speeds, we know they aren't together to begin with. And since they're asking us for the final speed of Allison, we know they weren't necessarily together to start with. So here is basically your setup. Mary and Allison. And then after the collision, you got Mary and Allison again. Now it says that uh, Mary has a mass of 50 so we're going to go ahead and give her that 50 50 and Allison has a mass of 45 it also tells us that Mary's initial speed is 3 meters per second and her final speed is 2 meters per second and it also tells us that Allison had an initial speed of 4 meters per second and we're looking for Allison's initial speed so first of all since this is these two objects are separate and separate we know it's it, it's an elastic collision so we're going to use that formula m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i equals m1 v1 f plus m2 v2 f and then we're just going to fill in the blanks now this v1 i and v2 i that is the initial velocity of the object 
So we've got 50 times 3 plus 45 times v, our unknown velocity, equals 50 times 2 plus 45 times 4. So if you do this, you get 180 plus 45v equals 100 plus, plus 180. Um, and so it ends up being 45v equals 100. You subtract the 180 to the other side. Minus 180, minus 180. Um, and then you end up getting V is equal to 2.89 meters per second. I am sorry, I was looking at the wrong problem. You actually get 2.2 meters per second. You know what? I can't read it all, and I'll tell you where I messed up. Sorry. This is 150. So, this should be 150, not 180. There we go. And then this would be 150. And so this should end up being 120. And so 120, sorry, 130, I'm just all kinds of messing up. 130 divided by 45 is 2.89. I had it right the first time. Sorry about that. That's what I get for trying to read off of a paper that my handwriting is terrible on. All right. So again, this problem, uh, you're just filling in the blanks. 50 times 3 That's where this comes from right here. 45V, that's where this comes from. 50 times 2 right here. And 45 times 4 goes right there. And so if you can actually do math, unlike me, 50 times 3 is 150. Uh, 50 times 2 is 100. 45 times 4 is 180. If you solve for V, you end up getting 45V equals 130, and then 130 divided by 45 should be 2.89. Sorry about that one. Number seven. Uh, the difference between inelastic and elastic is simple. In elastic, they're separate and separate, so that's elastic. And then in inelastic, they stick. So in an inelastic, they stick together. Whoops, let's make them stick. There we go. They stick together inelastic. Um, number eight, a cannon with a mass of 300 kilograms fires a 15 kilogram cannonball and recoiled with a velocity of five meters per second. What is the velocity of the cannonball? Okay, so uh, this is an explosion. We've got a cannon with a ball and we got a cannon and a ball. Okay, now they should be recoiling. So uh, we know beforehand they have a total mass of 315 with a velocity of 0 meters per second. Afterwards, the cannon's mass is 300 uh, with a velocity that we want to know, or sorry, that is 5 meters per second, and a ball with a mass of 15 whose velocity we want to know. So we're going to go to our explosion formula, and that's uh, m1 plus m2 v equals 300 times 5 plus 15v. Now this is 0, which means this whole term is 0. Okay, so we get 0 equals 1500 plus 15v. If we solve, we end up getting 100 meters per second equals v. And it comes out negative because I made the cannon positive. All right, uh, all it means is it's going the opposite direction of the cannon. Number nine, two kilogram blob of putty moving at three meters per second slams into a two kilogram blob of putty at rest. So we got blob of putty one and blob of putty two. What is the speed uh, of the stuck together putty immediately after colliding? So we're assuming that they're stuck together, so one and two. So this one is two kilograms going three meters per second. And this one is two kilograms going zero meters per second. Afterwards, it's four kilograms going an unknown speed V. So we get 2 times 3 plus 2 times 0 equals 4v. And if you solve for this, you get 6 equals 4v or 1.5 equals v. And that would be your answer, 1.5 meters per second. Okay, for these three, these next three, all you're doing is using the formula p equals mv. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So for number 10, you're going to do... P equals mv, 
they're telling you the momentum is 10, the mass is unknown, and the velocity is 2. So you solve and you get 5 equals the mass. For number 11, you're, looking, you're using P equals MV again. This time you're looking for the momentum. Uh, and you would do uh, the mass, 20, times the velocity, 8. And you would get momentum equals 160. And the unit for that is kilograms times meters per second. And for number 12, um, you're going to do momentum is equal to mass times velocity. This time they tell you the momentum is 3. The mass is unknown again. No, sorry. The mass is 0.05. And the velocity is unknown. If you divide, you get the velocity is 60 meters per second. All right. Uh, Conservation of momentum is momentum before is the same as momentum after. That's all it is. The momentum before a collision should be the same as the momentum after a collision. All right. Number 14. A 15 kilogram boat traveling at 12 meters per second makes a head on collision with a 5 kilogram raft moving in the opposite direction at 6 meters per second. After the collision, the raft moves backwards at 12.7 meters per second. Determine the velocity of the boat after the collision. So we've got a boat. Whoop, that was a terrible B. We've got a boat and a raft. And then after the collision, we've got a boat and a raft. And we know they're separate because they're giving us, they're, ask, they're telling us what the velocity of the raft is after and asking us to find the velocity of the boat. So we know they have to be different. So this is an elastic collision. The boat is 15 kilograms going 12 meters per second. And the raft is 5 kilograms going 6 meters per second, but they're going in opposite directions. So that means we need to make the 6 negative. The boat after the collision, we do not know its speed, but we know the raft is moved backwards at 22.7 uh, meters per second. Okay. Now the key thing here is it's moving backwards relative to what it was before. So since it was going to the left, and is now going to the, uh, its opposite direction, it would be going to the right. So we don't need to make this 22.7 negative, it stays positive. Okay, so now we're going to do uh, our elastic collision equation, M1V1I plus M2V2I equals M1V1F plus M2V2F. All right, and so we get 15 times 12 plus 5 times negative 6 equals 15V uh, plus 5 times 22.7. Okay, so now we're going to just uh, plug in numbers and see what they equal. So if you plug these numbers in, you get uh, 15 times 12 is 180 minus 30 equals 15V plus uh, 113.5. That's a 3. Uh, and then if we subtract the 113.5 to the other side, we get 150 minus 113.5 is 36.5. And then if we divide that by 15, we end up getting 2.4 meters per second for the velocity of our boat. And since it was not negative, it means it's still going forward. Last one, number 15, an ice skater, a 55 kilogram ice skater... 55 kilogram ice skater uh, is move sorry moving with a velocity of 20 or sorry 2.5 meters per second 2.5 meters per second is holding a 0.16 kilogram snowball so she's holding it and she's moving and then it says she throws the snowball forward with a velocity of 32 meters per second and it wants to know what is the velocity of the skater after throwing the snowball. I don't know why our hips got shifted. Uh, but we got to figure out what her velocity is. So this is an explosion, even though it's not at rest and even though it's not a cannon. They're together to begin with and they're separate at the end. So we're going to do the masses of both of them together times their initial velocity and then set that equal to the mass of the skater times her final velocity plus 32 times 0.16. And so next we're going to plug in numbers to see what it is. So, so if we do that, we end up getting that their total momentum before was 132.8. Uh, and then 
if you do 55V, that's just 55V, plus uh, 5.1, sorry, it's not 32.8, it's 32.9. Not bad. 32.9. Uh, there we go. So it's 137.9. I just can't read. Uh, and then 5.12. So we're going to subtract it over, and we end up getting 132.8 equals 55V. If you divide by 55, you end up getting 2.41 for your V. And that would be the final speed. So when she's moving forward and throws the snowball, she actually loses some speed.